Well, welcome everyone. This is Ron Seaver, the Presidential Sports Forum, and uh, we want to thank you. We're awfully glad that you could join us here on a Friday as we wrap up the work week with our uh, April edition of the NSF webinar series. Uh, and we certainly thank you for joining us this month. We've got a very special guest presenter, not to mention a very topical topic, how to avoid a pandemic during the coronavirus crisis. Now, if this isn't one of the top topics, one of the top subjects on each and every one of our business minds right now, then I don't know what is. So it's in times like this, and uh, heck, I'm not even sure if we've gone through times like this since, well, maybe post 9-11. Uh, but we all know how important it is to keep our teams, our properties, and our message out in front of our audience. And, and not just solely, that doesn't mean just solely the fans, but it is about keeping the fans connected. But to that, it's also about keeping our sponsors connected and engaged with us as well. So to, today's session, we're going to focus on both, ways to not only keep our existing fans engaged, but also we're going to dive into some innovative ways to better utilize our digital channels to attract, retain, and activate both fans and sponsors alike. Because at the end of the day, when it's all done, it's all about bringing people together actively, profitably, and, well, especially right now, virtually. Uh, so, And speaking of keeping everyone connected, before we start, I wanted to point out that on the bottom right-hand side of your screen, you'll see down there in the bottom window there, you'll see a window uh, for you to jot in any questions, any comments, not just questions, but also comments, says chat, uh, that you might have uh, for our speaker today. So these questions are going to be gathered up by Carly Dawson, who is producing tonight's show. And given that we have some time at the end, uh, Carly will jump on and pose them to Brian. So uh, that brings me to Brian, who's our speaker this evening. Uh, diving into our topic uh, will be our longtime friend, Brian Bauer, as you can see on your screen here. Uh, Brian is the president of Bauer Entertainment Marketing. Now, for those of you who have been to the uh, last couple of NSFs, then Brian might be very much a familiar face to you uh, because he's not only been a speaker uh, for us at the forum, but also his company, Bauer Entertainment Marketing, I'm, I'm proud to say, uh, they are the official web design partner for the NSF. Uh, and granted, as much as we love our site, uh, web design only scratches the surface they do. We found the folks at BEM to be masters of digital marketing. And I say we have, and it's not just us, folks, because uh, their roster of past and current clients, such as NASCAR, the X Games, Kid Rock, Kanye West, and Uber, just to name just a few in their growing portfolio. Uh, and they're led certainly by Brian. Brian is coming out of the University of Maryland, uh, where he was initially drawn into the music business, both as a performer, as well as a co-manager of Rock House Partners, uh, which is an entertainment marketing firm that's based right there in Tennessee, where Brian is uh, right now. And sometime around, oh, the middle of 2013, Brian opened up his own shop, Bauer Entertainment Marketing, and has been enjoying a hell of a run since then. Uh, so he's, uh, understand, he's nominated to the Nashville Business Journal's Top 40 Under 40, Nashville's Next A-List, and is a recipient of the Nashville Chamber of Commerce's Emerging Leader Award. So with that said, it's certainly our pleasure to give a special welcome and turn the floor over to Brian Bauer. Welcome, Brian. Thank you, Ron. Uh, appreciate it. And thank you to everybody who uh, is is joining us for uh for this session i mean it's uh yeah it's a crazy time uh a little little uh a uh, curveball that nobody really expected uh of course and and so um yeah i mean i i think certainly this is a session to share uh i think some valuable uh info but also just uh opportunity for for us to um you know hopefully come uh come together and and uh use this as a vehicle and a platform to uh, um, you know, collectively share ideas. Um, and so please do use that, that chat box and, and comment box uh, to, uh, you know, provide your feedback throughout uh, the, the, the presentation here. Carly will, uh, um, you know, hop in and, and, and kind of share what you're, you're, uh, you're typing and, and I will uh, respond uh, accordingly. Um, so first, just, and, and thanks, Ron, great intro uh, to echo that. Yeah, Nashville-based, uh, entertainment marketing uh, entrepreneur, 
uh, and, and president of Bauer Entertainment Marketing. Um, you know, prior to BEM, I was agency director managing uh, an entertainment marketing firm that uh, was owned by a global ticketing company called Etix. Um, I played lacrosse uh, for the national championship club team at University of Maryland. Uh, I was also a uh, manager and drummer for international uh, touring and, and recording bands. Uh, so I, I, I truly understand the sports and music industries from nearly uh, every angle. Um, how am I, I, I kind of dealing with all this and seeing all this and, and, and spending my time during the Corona uh, lockdown here? Uh, so my, my, my wife is a nurse, so that's been, uh, uh, you know, extra interesting. Um, and I've pretty much been solo with my five and two year old boys, uh, during the day. So my, my work days are usually beginning at around 6 PM. So it's been, uh, yeah, again, just kind of, uh, a, a pretty insane time, but, um, you know, we're, we're, we're just trucking and, 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 um, you know, all you can do is kind of put your head down and, and. And survive, right? And so um, I, I, I imagine that I, that I share that sentiment with a lot of people, uh, kind of watching this. And 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 so you know, we're we're I know we're not alone, and um, you know, we're gonna just kind of continue doing what we do. And again, hopefully today's uh, session provides a little bit of solace. Um, so why don't we go to the next slide, Kier Carly? Um, and I'll just again uh, talk about. Bauer Entertainment Marketing. So uh, we're a full service digital marketing agency. We deliver more fans, sales, and profit for uh, sports, music, and entertainment companies. Um, and essentially we are a complement to your in-house team. Um, so we provide uh, strategic consulting uh, as well as hands-on campaign management. Um, and I will add, we are very proud to be the official website partner a website development partner for the National Sports Forum. Um, beyond websites, I know Ron had referenced this, but we we offer clients tons of uh, digital marketing services from uh, social media marketing, email marketing, content marketing, uh, digital advertising, contest marketing, uh, SEO, sponsor activation. Again, the, you know the list goes on, but um, we plug in how how our partners need us both strategically and tactically. Um, so why don't we go to the next slide and I can just uh, uh, kind of emphasize uh, that because our clients include all sectors of the event industry, this is venues, promoters, uh, touring shows, athletes, festivals, uh, ticketing software, conferences, so forth. So I think, I think our competitive advantage um, is, is that we get to analyze the entire industry and and then offer what's new efficient and effective uh to our our clients and so um today i i'm really excited to share with you some of what we have been seeing so the covid 19 pandemic uh you know events around the world are are being postponed restructured uh, or canceled because of coronavirus um, and for weeks and months after this crisis subsides, uh, you know, fans are likely going to be unwilling to uh, leave their homes to to attend events. Um, I'll reference a study uh, that that was recently reported, and and it was conducted uh, from March 23rd to the 26th of a thousand U.S. consumers, uh, and and they uh, had indicated that after social distancing restrictions have been loosened and events are cleared as safe to attend, uh, that event stakeholders should expect dips in, in attendance. So in fact, 44% of respondents predicted they will attend fewer events. Uh, well, 38% reported their attendance won't be impacted um, and the remaining 18% indicated they will attend more events. Um, live events will, you know, they will return, um, but likely uh, they will return before fans can attend them. Um, will these sports games uh, take place before audiences can come back? Um, at first, you know, venues will have to limit guests and then slowly relax limitations over time. 
um, you know, certainly been uh, seeing and partaking in a lot of interesting conversations about um, just what safety regulations and what changes to ingress and egress will take place. Uh, do you provide masks to all entrants? Are already talking about taking everyone's temperature. It's going to be a very different, uh, you know, experience going forward. Um, but uh, I, you know, this is our new reality. Um, you know, this pandemic uh, is is what we will, uh, um, you know, be experiencing for live events across the globe for the foreseeable future. Uh, you know, it's unexpected, uh, unfair, but uh, you know, it's undeniable. Um, so. Next slide here, Carly. How does this impact the relationship between brand sponsors and live events? So the same study uh, that I just mentioned identified the perception of corporate sponsorship for events remains strong. Um, however, there's a new emphasis on doing good. So 30% agreed with the statement that sponsors should conduct business as usual. Well, 56% reported they now expect more from brands and corporations in terms of how socially good they are. So even if fans can't or won't attend live events, brand sponsors still want and need options to tell their story, uh, capture impressions and, and drive sales. Um, it's now absolutely essential for events that want to survive in the near term uh, and then thrive for the long run to activate their partners digitally. Uh, tough times are when collaboration, support, and partnerships, uh, it's when they mean the most um, and, and it's, it's most remembered. Uh, um, so, you know, again, now is the time to step up. Uh, so soon I'm gonna share uh, with you all uh, some practical proven ways to attract retain and activate sponsors uh, through digital channels. So, and, and this is even if you have to cancel your events. Uh, so we're gonna explore uh, how you can still generate uh, year round sponsor revenue by connecting fans and brands virtually and profitably. Um, so brand activation, why don't we just start here with a, a definition. So activation means bringing a brand to life uh, in ways that drive increased awareness, uh, engagement, and ultimately sales. Digital activation uh, can be even easier to launch, faster to show results, uh, lower in cost, easier to repeat, and better to measure than traditional offline activations. But you don't have to you know, take my word for it. We're gonna look at uh, some real world uh, examples of venues and teams delivering this right content to the right people at the right time. Um, and specifically, activations with participation and emotion, originality and creativity, and education and innovation. So as you can see here, this first is uh, activations that connect the brand with the audience through participation and emotion. So one of the earliest trends that I saw uh, at the uh, kind of the height of, of the freak out uh, was, um, you know, uh, arenas and teams stepping up to support local restaurant partners uh, with takeout and delivery. Um, so, uh, Carly, if you want to go to the, the next slide. Cool. Um, so some of the, the, the first examples, too, that you can see, uh, if you want to go to the, the, the slide following this one. Um, Northwestern University, Baylor Athletics are, are two great examples of uh, social media content that um, you know calls out their restaurant partners, uh, provides a very uh, uh, easy to consume visual of who's providing delivery and who's providing takeout. Um, so again, a very, I think, low hanging fruit kind of thing to do, um, but a powerful thing to do um, and, and really shows uh, local support for for those um, you know restaurant partners. On the next slide, uh, we can see kind of the same concept, but brought to uh, the next level. Uh, so Cincinnati Bearcats uh, developed a really compelling landing page on their site, which I I prefer over social media because you're driving people to uh, essentially your storefront. 
um, but through uh, things like advertising pixels, you can do future retargeting. So again, there's some better data capture there. Um, but specifically what they did was they um, developed this concept of supporting your local restaurants um, by uh, creating a contest out of it. And so if you were to uh, go order delivery or takeout uh, from, I think they have 19 partners, uh, you you know check them off the list uh, and you could win things like courtside seats, uh, VIP tickets, uh, I think that there was like locker room experiences and things things of that nature. But again, really uh, interesting, uh, uh, you know, approach to turn that concept into into a, a very engaging contest. This next slide that we'll take a look at, uh, National Predators, Go Preds. Uh, so a lot of teams right now, because of again this uh, kind of season sh shutdown that we're we're all experiencing, um, are digging into the archives. Uh, for their their broadcasts, uh, and so they're playing not only online but on on you know television uh, the you know older games and, and replays. Um, and what the Preds did here that was was really compelling and unique was that they used a replay game for a current activation. Um, and so they've had a consistent uh, partnership with Wendy's, where when four goals are scored, free frosties for everybody. Um, and so they did that when there was the replay and so this kind of gave a uh, uh, you know a, a refresh for this existing partnership and, and um, you know kind of acknowledged our our current scenario but saying you know this game might be a replay uh, but this is real and uh, I, you know I, I just love that that concept of uh, keeping things uh, current despite the content uh, not being so real time. Um, so next, we can take a look at this trend about social good with food delivery. Um, and, and some of these first examples we'll see here on, on the next slide. Um, this was FC Dallas um, and Toyota, uh, as well as uh, the Houston Rockets and Toyota Center. Um, and, and, you know, the concept here was uh, delivering food uh, that otherwise would have, you know, perhaps been used for concessions during these upcoming games uh, to food banks. Um, and so I thought that that was, uh, you know, the epitome of doing social good um, and, and placing, uh, uh, you know, the brands uh, that were involved uh, at the forefront of this real feel good story. Um, we can go to the next slide as well and see Gila River uh, Arena and Levy Restaurants. Uh, doing something very similar, but, you know, this was five games worth of food uh, that they would have been using but couldn't, uh, and they they pivoted and turned this into an opportunity for a local food bank and families in need. Uh, so I've I've seen um, you know many other uh, organizations. I think I I saw a recent post from the United Center, uh, and they had a great image of their entire uh, side of the arena, all the seats. Uh, were filled with food, like food boxes uh, that are going to be delivered. So a lot of creative stuff out there revolving around this concept of uh, social good with food delivery. Um, next, using the venue as content. Um, I, I love some of the creativity of the, uh, you know, the physical signage uh, and and uh, kind of what's going on at the at the venue and repurposing that into digital content. And so we can take a look at a couple examples here. Um, so this first slide here, this is uh, Gillette Stadium, and they're uh, you know on the jumbotron, kind of uh, uh, you know giving a shout out with uh, you know heroes. Um, uh, as you know, the uh, medical professionals, some superheroes wear capes, ours wear scrubs. Uh, love, love that, and also love my wife on the right-hand side. Shout out to her, uh, and and you know the whole healthcare community for doing what they're doing. It's incredibly challenging, and uh, yeah, I mean my my heart goes out to them because um, you know I, I'm. I'm Sometimes just a sucker trying to sell a ticket, and and what they do is just un, un, unbelievable. So um, yeah, just a quick you know, you know shout out for for, for them. Um, we can go to the next next slide, um, and and we can 
see what MotoGP did, where they used, uh, you know, their signage uh, here for the stay at home messaging and also incorporated uh, their brand logos on that content. Uh, Rogers and Rogers Arena lighting things up pink each night to salute healthcare and frontline workers. So, uh, you know, a nice creative way uh, to, to support uh, and bring more attention to, uh, to healthcare and involve the brands involved or the brand, uh, the brand partners. Um, why don't we take a look at these next slides. Also Wembley Stadium uh, lighting up blue uh, to uh, you know, drive more awareness and, and appreciation uh, for, for uh, you know, their partner NH, uh, well, with the NHS. Um, and this one on the right, I thought that was relatively creative with um, you know, the, the uh, Dennis Mowers and Toyota Stadium uh and and just acknowledging that uh hey the crew is still here guys are getting ready for when we can play games again and we're we're cutting grass with our our mowing partner so thought that, again that was a nice little little touch uh that they uh spread the good word on social media and then this has got to be my favorite from lynn family stadium and activating their partner gw zoo go tiger king uh and and yeah i mean this is just pretty brilliant uh way to spread the word about safety um and you can see all their their brand partners uh uh kind of listed on the side there so again a lot of creativity and and a lot of opportunity uh to be using phys you know the physical facilities uh and and repurposing them in uh you know the scope of digital marketing so why don't we move on here to activations uh, that energize the brand through originality and creativity. Um, and, and I'll also uh, just really quickly take a pause too. If we are, if again, anybody has any questions or if we're going too fast or what have you, just, you know, feel free to chat in and Carly, let me know uh, the feedback and, 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 you know, happy to answer anything and, um, and you know, adjust the pacing. So um, with that, yes, uh, one of the, the um, you know, tough realities uh, for for many is that they got to work from home now, and and it's a total game changer for a lot of people's day to day experiences. Um, and you know, I, I'm seeing a lot of uh, uh, teams and venues uh, at, at least attempting to try to uh, instill a lot more fun uh, while working from home um, with things like Zoom backgrounds. And so we can take a look at some of uh, these examples from uh, Vivint Arena and Utah Jazz, uh, so providing some uh, uh, you know fun elements to those conference calls. Uh, the next one is another example: Sky and Sky Stadium doing uh, similar, uh, you know, providing uh, downloadable backgrounds. So I've seen this, um, you know, from a lot of uh, uh, teams as well as landing pages on their websites. So again, I go back to uh, what the, the Bearcats had done, which was create a version of it where, um, you know, you're driving people to the your site. And again, there's data capture opportunities there, which is, uh, you know, a great path. Um, here, the Florida Panthers and Baptist Health, uh, you know, making working out from home more fun. Uh, so they brought in some, uh, their athletes to provide workouts uh, for people at home to follow along, um, as well as a virtual uh, 5K race, uh, which I, I thought is great. Um, you know, if you're you're on your treadmill at home, or if you got enough space outside, you can uh, you can participate in a unique way, um, and it's a fundraising opportunity too for for their health partner. Um, so, in a lot of really uh, really cool creativity around just the concept of um, you know, acknowledging that everybody is at home. And, and so what can you do to make their lives, uh, you know, a little bit more fun and, and relaxed? Um, so why don't we take a look at the next slide here? Um, so I mentioned working from home and just my wife as a nurse, and, and these are my two little dudes that I'm hanging out with on a daily basis. Uh, trying to make sure that they don't murder each other and or uh, eat us out of house and home and you know just every day is survival with these guys but it's like it's the best uh, there's so much fun um, we took you know this uh, I snapped this while we were taking a hike the other day 
just again to get them out of the house um, and stop terrorizing our dog. Uh, so we're just, you know, this is this is the reality that I know a lot of parents are experiencing. Um, and and I love seeing all of the teams and venues, uh, you know, getting involved in and in, in trying to um, provide some really cool family friendly activities uh, that uh, that that you know folks like me can participate in with their kids. Um, so why don't we take a look at some of these first examples? Um, so this is uh, Dickie's Arena uh, providing uh, kind of a word search. Um, I had seen some other uh, others doing like crossword puzzles. Um, here's uh, Utah Jazz, uh, and in, they incorporated Zion's Bank. You can't really make it out so clearly here, but it's part of their coloring book. So they were including the partners in the coloring book. Um, so love love the creativity here, where um, again you can kind of print these out at home for for your kids and parents to do together. Um, similarly, this next example, um, I believe this is the, uh, yeah, so Cubs and Vienna beef. Uh, so this is spotting the difference between uh, two Cubs uh, images. Um, so this was, yeah, can you spot uh, the five differences? Uh, so again, you know, just an engaging kind of fun thing to do uh, that brings additional impressions for brands that, you uh, they likely wouldn't have experienced had uh, had you know this scenario not happened, um, but uh, you know great on on, on Cubs to uh, you know develop this uh, this concept here. Um, why don't we take a look at the next uh, couple examples? So this is uh, you can see on the left Patriots Hall of Fame presented by Raytheon. Um, they did a scavenger hunt, which is awesome. Um, so they uh, you can see acknowledge that. You know, you're stuck at home and so we want to bring a little bit more fun to to this challenging situation um, and so they created this scavenger hunt uh, that people could then reply uh, to uh, to this post by you know publishing their photos and videos that they captured during the scavenger hunt together um, and it's a engaging contest because folks could then win two uh, two tickets to the hall so pretty, uh, pretty slick there. Love that. Um, and then on the right, you can see the uh, the Red Sox um, creating a, a family workbook for homeschooling. Um, and what they they've done is in, uh, incorporate uh, Synovian, uh, their partner, into uh, into the workbook. So um, I think again, two two really great examples of just these family friendly activities that teams and and, and venues can uh, you know start producing. We can check out the next uh, example. Uh, this is from the Grand Rapids Griffins. Um, and so they've taken things uh, a step further where they're involving their athletes uh, to do regular reading story times, which is awesome. Um, and you can also see the one on the right, an athletes uh, you know, doing the uh, downloadable coloring book uh, that, uh, that you know, fans again can print out at home and, and kind of use with, with their family. Uh, and this was done in partnership with uh, the Michigan Education Savings Program. So yeah, a lot of really creative stuff for, uh, for families to, to get involved. And I think it's, it's also extra notable because uh, I know that we've um, likely all seen the, the stats where, um, you know, when you get kids involved and, and, and you know, attending sports, but certainly just becoming fans of teams early on, uh, they will attend incremental games throughout their lifetime. So this is certainly speaks to that whole, um, you know, kind of term of cradle to grave marketing and, and really just, um, you know, getting uh, uh, that affinity, uh, uh, you know, as early as possible in, in uh, you know, these fans' lives. So um, again, really, really cool stuff here. Um, so next we can take a look at just a, a you know, a trend that I had observed about just finding new life uh, for existing partnerships um, and, and uh, um, you know, activations. And so this first example we'll see uh, right here on the left, this is uh, T-Mobile Arena. Uh, and they uh, had hand sanitizer swag in the Event and Arena Marketing Conference, uh, you know, grab bag, and, uh, and it got Second Life. It got reposted uh, here. Uh, so for uh, you know incremental impressions for T-Mobile, so that was that was kind of slick. And then uh, on the right, 
you'll see uh, this is uh, Ryko Arena um, and their hotel partner, Doubletree by Hilton. And you can kind of read this here where, uh, you know, you, you've been asked to work from home, but don't have the right environment or resources. Why not use one of the bedrooms at Doubletree by Hilton at Ryko Arena? Uh, we offer peace and quiet, free Wi-Fi, free tea and coffee, free car parking, uh, you know, all for 30, 30 uh, pounds a day. Um, so I thought that that was great, right? Where, um, you know, you can, can repurpose something that, uh, um, you know, was already in place and just look at it in a new angle and context, given, uh, you know, the, the situation that we're all facing. So next we will take a look here. Oh, sorry, Ron, did you have a, have a question? Oh, I can't, I can't hear you. Are you on, are you on mute maybe? Can you hear me? I can hear, uh, this is Carly. Oh. I can hear you, Brian. Um, I can't hear Ron. Um, I'm not sure if he's trying to talk, but yeah, I can, I can still hear you. Yeah, Ron, I'm not, not, not sure what's up, but if you want to maybe chat Carly and then, and then if, the, I don't know if any other questions came up. Um, Perfect. Yeah. I'll, I'll uh, jump in if, uh, if he texts cool. me and lets me know what, uh, what he's trying to communicate. Yeah, no worries. All good. Um, and I'll, I'll give him a minute here if, uh, if we got time. Otherwise, I think I, maybe just yeah I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep trucking and and yeah, yeah Ron, if uh, if you want to chat Carly and let me know um, anyways activations that enhance uh, the brand through education and innovation um, so this first uh, uh, you know kind of section here that I'll I'll talk about uh, Carly if you want to go to the next slide um, just keeping customers healthy uh, and healthcare partners happy by offering tips. Um, so we can see a couple examples in this next slide. Um, this is the Salt Lake City Marathon. So we can kind of take a look how they um, brought attention to the University of Utah Health uh, and their uh, their healthcare staff by sharing, uh, you know, a, a kind of information about social distancing. Um, I thought it was just a good, uh, um, you know, opportunity to that that they use this platform to. Um, share ways to just keep everybody a little bit more safe. Um, and then on the right, you can see the Pelicans and uh, Oxner Medical Center uh, sharing seven tips to keeping your immune system healthy. Um, so again, great, uh, great content from them. Uh, on the next slide, we can see the uh, NIU Huskies. Uh, they activated their, their whole coaching staff uh, to give really cool Blue Cross Blue Shield PSAs. So what's um, extra compelling about this is it's, uh, it's video content that all of the coaches took, uh, many just with, with their iPhones, um, and they easily splice it together. Very simple to, to, to put together some, uh, you know, engaging content uh, with, uh, with their coaching staff that, um, you know, have a little extra time on their hands. Um, so uh, why don't we take a look also at our next slide, which is a, a cool training online gaming tournaments. Um, so we saw a lot of uh, use of, of Twitch. Um, you can see this example here uh, on the left from Kentucky Basketball. Um, so they had a partnership um, with uh, a gaming uh, organization to put on a 2K20 uh, or NBA 2K20 uh, Twitch tournament, um, and it was presented by Coca-Cola. Um, on the right, you'll see uh, the Grand Rapids Griffins raising money for Kids' Food Basket, uh, which is their nonprofit partner. Um, so kind of cool to get their, their athletes involved in, uh, in online gaming as people are kind of taking a time out from, from live, uh, live sports. Um, the next slide, we can also see a version of this from uh, NASCAR and NFL athletes uh, playing Twitch together. And this is a compelling uh, cross-sport collaboration uh, that I thought was unique um, and an opportunity again to raise 
uh, raise money for nonprofit partners. Um, and then, you know, NASCAR being NASCAR, they've got their branding over everything. And so these are again, incremental uh, impressions that those brands would have not received otherwise. Um, moving on to, yeah, mobile app technology. So there's a lot of really creative and, and uh, um, you know, and clever uh, tech out there that is, uh, um, you know, a great vehicle for this current, uh, um, you know, challenge that we're facing where we need to just activate more digitally. And so why don't we take a look at some of these here. Um, first on the left, uh, this is came from Fanex which um, many of you might have engaged with uh, at the National Sports Forum in Atlanta. They were an exhibitor there. Um, and so they uh, provide a uh, interesting plat app platform. Well, you're at the game, uh, you'll see on the Jumbotron, trivia come up um, or other uh, types of um, you know, engaging games that um, people will then get to uh, um, you know, interact with using the, uh, their mobile phones while they're in, in uh, the arena. Um, obviously can't do that now. So they pivoted and created this really cool hometown heroes trivia contest that they emailed out. Um, and I know it's small, we'll, we'll share the slides uh, later, but the, as part of it, uh, they're giving away an LG uh, TV. And so again, a really cool way to use their technology to, uh, you know, to promote brand partners uh, as well as the teams themselves. Um, this example here on the right, I thought this was uh, uh, interesting where Preakness, uh, they are uh, first acknowledging the scenario everyone is with their, their copy uh, saying, you know, everyone could use a little extra luck right now. Um, and then they, uh, you know, present their uh, mobile uh, uh, betting app partner um, and, and including it kind of a discount code and things like that. So, um, you know, good, good examples there. Um, and then why don't we go to the next slide here and we can talk about Q Audio. Again, another uh, NSF exhibitor um, and a, a really cool company, uh, Nashville based. So good, you know, shout out to, to uh, another local Nashville uh, business. Um, and so Q Audio can trigger brand offers uh, in team mobile apps uh, via their data over audio technology. So really, really interesting where again, if you're in the arena, they can insert files into uh, what gets broadcast and it triggers to, uh, to the app, um, typically light shows, uh, but also they can do other things like trivia. And so what they're pivoting here and, and doing uh, with uh, University of Tennessee is um, uh, the similar kind of triggering of uh, data over audio through a Facebook live broadcast. Um, and again, that's detected by the team's mobile app uh, and it creates this amazing digital brand activation experience for fans. Um, so we can kind of take a, a, a minute here, Carly, I don't know if you, connected with Ron or have received any other uh, uh, you know, comments or questions, um, you let me know if you want me to just kind of keep, keep rolling. No, you should yeah, be fine. Um, uh, hopefully, keep... hopefully you can hear me, yes. Yeah, so my, my other phone went dead, so uh, technology at its finest, I'm actually back, so hopefully you can hear me. All good, no worries, I can hear you now. Excellent, please continue. Okay, yeah, all good. So. Uh, I wanted to present uh, here just some, some additional digital marketing uh, tactics that I think you can consider uh, for creative digital brand activations uh, that again can help you and your sponsors overcome this uh, this pandemic. So this first one we'll we'll talk about uh, contest marketing. So contest marketing receives on average 15 times more engagement than your standard social post. Um, beyond just creating additional buzz, uh, it's also a great uh, mechanism for capturing data uh, and, and, and leads. Um, and so big advocates of contest marketing. Um, we can take a look here in the next slide. Uh, love, again, the Grand Rapids Griffins uh, had established a suspended season survival kit. Uh, and some of the things that they included uh, here was um, 
uh, a bobblehead and a fleece blanket and it looks like there's a bunch of other swag in there but um, I mean cool opportunity also to include uh, you know your sponsors products um, or services in in that giveaway um, the example here on the right this comes from uh, game time uh, so secondary ticketing mobile app um, specializing in sporting events um, and so you can see uh, what they did here was um, acknowledge that people are going stir crazy at home uh, and so let's get creative uh, send us video telling uh, why you have uh, or why you love game time and you can win a thousand dollar credit to use for future games when they when they come back right and we're obviously all dying to uh to, to celebrate together with live events um so really again cool uh, um you know contest um but here's you know an opportunity i think um to you know perhaps use uh you know, you know use sponsors as um you know a means for um you know, including them as prizes and things like that, right? So uh, cool opportunity as well to share that data with your sponsors, something that they find uh, um, you know, extremely valuable. So if you can co-brand those, those contests, um, you know, they have in, uh, you know, additional reach through their networks that uh, you can both kind of uh, partner on and, uh, and, and you know, bolster that alliance together. So um, again, I, I, I liked that both of these are, are sort of acknowledging that people are going to start crazy. This is the current uh, um, scenario. Uh, and so let's, uh, let's at least try to have some fun with, uh, with it. So we're going to go to the next, next slide here and we can take a look at this, um, this concept of just sort of supporting a local network of artists um, and, and using that to activate brands. So one of the uh, um, early examples I saw was Vans. Um, so the, the, the shoe brand um, and what they developed uh, kind of, they have a bunch of partners with skate parks and skate shops um, and all these local uh, um, small businesses. And they tap their creativity to each design a shoe um, that then vans would sell and then a portion of the proceeds would go to um, to those those small business partners so again great feel-good uh, promotion um, and as I think about this in terms of teams and venues and what they can be doing um, you know getting brand partners uh, to activate designers and develop custom merchandise um, and, and again, you know, supporting artists that are really struggling right now and can use that work, um, I think is a great PR play. Um, and then, you know, if you're not selling through e-commerce, um, I mean, now, now is the time to really focus on, on, on trying to, um, you know, pivot uh, and, and make sure that you're, you're uh, you know, having an e-commerce shop in, in place. Um, we can go to the next slide here, and similarly, um, you know, the Hard Rock Stadium uh, and, and showcasing local artists uh, through murals that are around their facility. Um, so really cool concept here, where they're just, um, you know, showing that they've got these 19 murals created by artists from all over the world, uh, and they're doing that as regular content. Um, I think that they can take that a step further and activate um, brand partners where you know, these uh, brand partners can commission artists um, and art, artwork that perhaps features the brand in some way, shape or form. Um, but again, I, I think that there's uh, some uh, symbiotic relationship there that can, can take place uh, that could be, uh, yeah, very, very interesting and then be used as, uh, as digital content. Um, so next we can just talk about the, the notion of interactive and uplifting content which is really what resonates right now, um, given, given kind of the, the, the temperature and where everybody's at. It's um, just positive vibes, man. I mean, it's really, really goes a, a long way. Um, and we can take a look at uh, this first example, uh, Van Andel Arena, uh, having a little fun with, you're about to be quarantined with two people for the whole month. Uh, you know, pause this gif that, it, you know, you can't see the video here, but it cycles through incredibly fast. And so when you screenshot it, 
then users will post their their result. Um, and I just thought that that was kind of a, a, a cute, clever way to, uh, to to have some engaging content that then becomes um, some user-generated content. Um, so I do believe that that's um, you know opportunity to perhaps incorporate maybe some brand partners in in the GIF. Um, but again, I, I thought that that was notable. Um, you can see the example here on the right, the Hartford Yard Goats and their work from home staff all singing, take me out to the ball game together. Uh, so I thought that that was, was, was pretty cool. Um, and the, the uplifting uh, messaging of, you know, we'll be ready when, when this is all over. Um, you know, perhaps there's some product placements, uh, you know, and, and, and karaoke that can be done uh, for your brand and team. So, uh, yeah, again, thought those were, were, were some uh, notable uh, examples. Um, why don't we take a look at the next slide uh, and we can see this initiative of opening day at home. Uh, so this was kind of across MLB. Uh, here, the Mets, you can see that they uh, encourage their followers to post their Mets gear and show how they were celebrating opening day at home. Um, and I, I, again, great concept to um, bring people together um, and develop uh, user-generated content. Uh, and, and, and again, I think that this is a, a perfect opportunity uh, to activate your you know, product or gear partners uh, through initiatives similar like this. Um, next example, this was one that I came across with uh, the Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, and how they associated their fight song uh, with hand washing. And so how long uh, to wash your hands? Well, just sing our fight song while you're washing your hands, while, while you're washing your hands. So certainly an opportunity here to include uh, maybe a health and wellness partner uh, along with this, uh, this type of content. So uh, I could certainly see this as video content as well uh, for your, your team and venue. So, Next examples, uh, podcast and streaming. Um, I think audio uh, is, is a huge opportunity uh, for brand activations. Um, and so some of the examples that uh, I, I included in this presentation, you can see the LA Kings uh, and their podcast. Um, again, uh, you know, their messaging is, is really poignant where, you know, if you're feeling anxious, confused, or scared, this podcast will remind you you're not alone. That's really, really powerful. Um, and, and, you know, with their podcast and that type of content, I think it's, you know, the human voice and, and kind of connecting with, with other people at this time is extremely important. Um, and, and through this channel, they get to drive, uh, you know, more tune in and on air uh, sponsor impressions. Um, next example here from the Griffins. This is, uh, you know, missing, missing game nights at Van Andel Arena. Well, we are too. Uh, and then they promote their Griffin's game night tracks. Um, so that, you know, using streaming playlists, uh, I think is, is a great opportunity um, to ally with a, a sponsor and do a sponsor curated playlist. Um, so again, audio, music, I mean, I, I, I definitely encourage uh, folks to leverage those uh, platforms. Um, on that note, why don't we move on to the next slide and, and we'll just, um, I'll just kind of express, I, I think, just an A to Z list of marketing channels that you should be using for, for digital activations. Um, so we'll go through these. Uh, so chatbots. Chatbots uh, are a great mechanism simply because they're, um, uh, they can be, uh, you know, a data capture element to it where people subscribe to your chatbot. Um, those open rates are very strong. Um, and, and that kind of personalized one-on-one -on -one engagement um, feels uh, and, and, and engages strongly with, uh, with fans, right? So, uh, so that's a great platform that I think is underutilized. Uh, digital ads, of course, uh, emails, uh, mobile apps, um, which we had, had, had mentioned some already, uh, podcasts I just touched on, um, SMS, text messages, those are getting like 98% open rates. Um, so again, a very strong vehicle for, uh, for you know, digital activations. Um, social media, of course, uh, streaming playlists we talked about, uh, videos. 
videos, videos, videos. Yeah, I mean, people are just consuming videos like crazy. Um, and then also if you can do live streams, things like live stream Q and A's with athletes, and maybe uh, you know you get your your uh, brand partner to um, be the moderator for the Q and A. I mean, lots lots that you can do there. Um, and webinars again. Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, websites. Uh, so websites certainly your marketing site, um, but I think something uh, to consider if if you have not uh, is is the ticketing site. Um, you know, there are events that are likely still on sale down the road. Um, and so, you know, certainly leverage your ticketing sites and your, you know, printed home tickets and et cetera to, to uh, you know, position your, your brand partners on and make sure they're getting their, their impressions that way. So why don't we just go to kind of the, the next slide and I'll, I'll pose this question to you guys, you know, how how will you digitally activate your brand sponsors and what are some of the takeaways from from this presentation what are some of the things you've just been seeing uh you know with your own facilities and teams and and your colleagues um you know i would love to to, to kind of hear what you guys are doing so please uh you know submit that in the in the chat um, but also just feel free to to email me my email is brian uh, b-r-i-a-n at bauerem.com uh, that's b-a-u-e-r-e-m.com um and and yeah would love to uh would love to 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 hear what you guys have going on um ron did you want to ha have something to add quick yeah no i wanted to ask uh if we had a little opportunity here uh maybe throw it open for some questions if uh carly has managed to uh, curate any uh, i was curious i just wanted to ask I mean, from all of these things that we're seeing, and they're just incredible ideas here, uh, do you see any of these staying long after the pandemic's over? Will we, uh, are we starting to break in some new ground here that, uh, you know, are some great ideas that we're just gonna keep on moving forward? Yeah, I mean, the, this was certainly the trend, right? Things were certainly going more digital. Uh, and I think that that out of necessity, things are, fully digital uh, and, and, and really, um, you know, we are taking this leap forward just uh, again, um, due to this scenario that, that, that we're, we're currently experiencing. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I see this as, um, you know, the, the absolute path forward um, and, 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 and there's likely no turning back. Um, now, what, one thing that I'll, 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 I'll add to kind of reinforce that, uh, there was a recent report by uh, Later.com uh, where they uh, had discovered that the average screen time uh, is actually up five hours and 40 minutes per day. Uh, and so that's an 18% increase uh, from weeks prior. So fans, they, they want compelling, compassionate, clever content right now, and they will want that for months to come. Um, the other thing that I think that's that's important, there's some data from the 2003 uh, SARS epidemic that kind of confirms that, you know, brands that sustain exposure throughout a crisis, they can increase market share three times uh, during downturns and then uh, rebound faster and even stronger during and after recovery. Mm. So responding adding value and being agile now that's going to make massive difference later on uh, in awareness preference sales and loyalty uh, so there's this this psycho uh, psychology concept and i'm a i'm a psych major so i'm kind of dating myself a little bit but there's this thing called uh mere exposure effect uh and it, it basically means that the more people see or hear something uh the more they like it so now is not the time for for cutting marketing or laying low now is the time to increase marketing frequency get active think long term well great place to uh to to jump over to carly if uh if we had any questions that came in carly uh hop on here and 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 fire away if you would yeah we uh we had some interesting audience questions um that i'll throw to you brian so one of them was, when you stated that 44% of fans are less likely to attend live events post COVID-19, how can brands, teams, and properties market to encourage their fans to come back? 
Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, I think first and foremost, it's about acknowledging the the, the fear and being compassionate um, and and expressing that that they deeply understand the pain point that they're experiencing. Um, without that, it's tone deaf. Um, and and I go a little bit back to what I just referenced uh, with that mere exposure effect, right? So if you're, you know, on one hand providing kind of compassion and understanding, but also just providing frequent content and being engaging um, and, and remaining kind of top of mind for fans now, when they do come around and when they do eventually feel more comfortable to buying tickets, and they will, um, the, you will be their choice as to where they will spend their money because they've grown accustomed to hearing from you. And again, they've, uh, there's trust there that's been built and, uh, you know, due to the recognition. Um, and so I believe wholeheartedly that by remaining as active as possible now, um, that will pay off in dividends uh, when, when, you know, this a readjustment happens and the rubber band snaps back the other way to, uh, you know, people feeling comfortable enough to buy tickets. So I think that we'll be able to see, um, you know, more people buy tickets sooner if you are active now. Excellent answer. Yeah, that's Carly, great. anything else? Yeah. Yeah, we can end it with this one, uh, kind of move away from the team side a bit. Um, so the question is, do you have any ideas for nonprofits looking to engage with their current clients? Yeah, so with, with nonprofits, uh, there's there's one that comes to mind uh, that I, I I think fits perfectly with kind of the scenario where we're we're, we're kind of facing now. Um, there's really cool uh, online uh, uh, auction platforms. Uh, one one that I've used is called uh, Bidding Owl, um, but you know connecting with your sports, uh, you know, with your team partners, with your brand partners to put up uh, things to uh, host this auction. Uh, and then you can use that as content. You can use that obviously for fundraising. Um, so that would be, a, a, I think, one example of uh, something that nonprofits um, and, and also for-profits with a charity partner involved, uh, you know, I think that that's, that's uh, something that could do really well now. So let me ask you, uh, as, as we wrap up here, you've got a, a really intriguing offer up on the screen here. Uh, I, what I love is the fact that hopefully all of you had a chance to write Brian's uh, email address down. As you can see, phone number uh, to get in touch, website. Uh, but by all means, I know, Brian, you're very generous with your uh, time and your ideas. And in fact, I see three custom ideas, customized ideas uh, what have we got here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so you know, thank you again for for the opportunity to to, to you know provide a little bit of uh, value here as we're all just um, kind of experiencing this this together. Um, and wanted to obviously express like we're we're here to help however we can, um, and and you know we're here to help uh, not only through providing uh, um, you know our observations and, and recommendations with this uh with this presentation but yeah i mean let's 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 all chat let's figure out you know we can help with with content we can help with uh digital sponsorship activation you know a whole host of, of other things um and and so what i'm offering is uh uh you know go to our site you can certainly uh use uh, we've got the presentation download link uh on there so you can see all this uh, stuff that we talked about uh but also uh sign up for three free customized ideas uh for digital activations uh so for kind of first come first serve happy to uh you know provide some real specific uh recommendations for folks uh that want to uh um, you know get some some um you know particular ideas using their uh their assets that they may have some assets that they haven't yet thought of uh but yeah happy to to help there um and so yeah i, I again reach out um and then one thing too that i i i realized that i didn't necessarily mention before but i think is important uh, just in terms of brand partnerships, um, I think you know, folks, we're likely going to have to need to look into new sponsor categories. Uh, you know, as airlines, hotels, and restaurants kind of reduce their spend, um, you know, there's there's other categories uh, that you should probably spend your 
your, your time and, and energy on. And so I think some examples include online education, uh, business productivity, software as a service, uh, home delivery, supermarkets, uh, you've got online media, uh, and then you know health and wellness. Uh, so I think that those are all great. I would love to, again, hear uh, what other categories and where else uh, you know people are finding uh, some some traction with. Uh, so yeah, hit me up. Uh, would love to continue the conversation. Well, thank you, Brian. And you can see you can email Brian directly uh, at brian at bowerem.com, uh, and he can answer you, or you can send a question into us. Uh, we had many folks uh, do that, uh, and they'll send it to Carly at sports-forum.com. And she'll forward it on to Brian, but he's been kind enough to say that he'll certainly respond to everybody uh, and give you any insights and help that he can. And we thank you so much for that, Brian. Really appreciate you coming out and doing this today. Some outstanding ideas and we want to thank you. We certainly want to thank everybody uh, that took part. Uh, we had a record turnout for uh, this month's call. Uh, we had over 600 people that actually signed up for it. Uh, which typically for us were about 150, 160. Uh, so you can see this is a very popular topic and you did a great job with it, Brian. All kinds of ideas uh, for people to take back and put to work with them. So please let us know what you think and, and, uh, and, and ideas that you got from here and what you're gonna be doing with it. Certainly let Brian know. Uh, and in behalf of all of us here, uh, here at the NSF, we wanna wish you all a great April. Uh, please stay safe, stay home. Uh, and we will get through this. We'll get through this all together. Uh, and we thank you all so very, very much. Uh, be in touch. We'll certainly be in touch. We've got a, another webinar coming up in a few more weeks, uh, and we hope to see you back then. So for now, take care, everybody. And again, thanks so much, Brian. Good night. Thank you.